Uh, all right, so yeah, uh, let me talk about now um, certified deletion. Uh, and this one is joint work with uh, Dakshita Karana again and um, Alexander Paremba. So I'll start by just describing the basic setting of um, certifiable deletion and publicly verifiable deletion. So we have Alice, uh, she's on her phone and she has some like data there. Uh, maybe it's some photos or some other information that she wants to upload to the cloud, right? So she'll just send uh, a, an encryption of her data to the cloud so the cloud can store it for her, okay? And we want this to be some uh, private storage, right? So we'll assume there's like some encryption scheme going on, the, the server can't recover uh, Alice's private data. So this is something that is uh, pretty standard so far and, and done all the time. The reason that I have notated this with like cat notation, like why is this encoding quantum, is because I want to allow for some additional security property, which is that if Alice uh, wishes, she can um, actually, you know, ask the cloud uh, to delete her data, okay? And there should be some procedure that allows the cloud to like uh, actually delete the data and produce some certificate that can be returned to Alice uh, that verifies the fact that the cloud actually did uh, perform this deletion, right? And our goal is to say that, well, if this certificate is valid, then even if the server kind of was, was malicious, um, then they won't be able to recover the data, um, even given the secret key for the encryption scheme or even potentially given uh, unbounded time, okay? Um, so of course we need some sort of like quantum encoding for this because if the server is malicious and the encoding was classical, they could have just kind of copied the encoding uh, and saved one copy for later. Um, so this is kind of what, what requires the quantum functionality here. And for this talk, I'm going to be talking about publicly verifiable deletion, which satisfies this additional property that it's not just Alice that can verify the certificate. Anyone can actually look at the certificate. So this removes the need for Alice to kind of like keep a secret verification key uh, with her. Okay. So this property of publicly verifiable deletion, uh, as far as I'm aware, was first uh, was raised in this work of Broadbent and uh, Islam, so they, they construct a privately ver verifiable certified deletion scheme, but somewhere in the intro, as far as I remember, they ask uh, whether uh, we can construct publicly verifiable deletion. Uh, this work of Hiroka Morame, uh, Morame Nishimaki Nyamakawa uh, gave the first feasibility result. They construct a public encryption scheme with uh, PVD, but they assume some like really strong um, assumptions. One-shot signatures, extractable witness encryption, these are things that we kind of only really have candidates for right now. They're non-standard assumptions. Uh, this, this work of uh, Alex Paremba actually constructs not only PKE, but also fully homomorphic encryption, again with this property of PBD, under the standard assumption of LWE, but the security also relies on a new uh, unproven conjecture that he calls the strong Gaussian collapsing conjecture. And then finally, another related work uh, from earlier this year is we managed to construct a variety of crypto systems with publicly verifiable deletion under the assumption of post-quantum uh, indistinguishability obfuscation, which is a, a concrete assumption, but again, we actually only have candidates for that at this point, okay? So the main result of this current work is to show that we can construct publicly verifiable deletion from standard assumptions, okay? And the first thing that we do uh, is we prove uh, Perembra's strong Gaussian collapsing conjecture. And that actually establishes that his scheme, uh, which is um, based on uh, a very standard like classical uh, encryption scheme, dual regev encryption. This gives us uh, um, encryption with publicly verifiable deletion from LWE, okay? Um, but then we look at our like proof technique and, and we generalize it. One thing that we actually notice is that, you know, if you're at this morning's talk, you saw uh, Minky talk about this public encryption scheme they have from non-abelian group actions. So interestingly, without any changes, we can show that this scheme satisfies publicly verifiable deletion as well. Um, and kind of generalizing our technique, we uh, initiate the study of uh, what we call target collapsing hash functions and certified everlasting target collapsing hash functions. A little bit later in the talk, I'll define these. And we use these hash functions to present a general template for obtaining publicly verifiable deletion. And we have a variety of results here. 
uh, one of the things we can show is like um, commitments with publicly verified deletion from injective one-way functions, so we don't even need public key assumptions for that. I will mention that there are a, uh, even though this is a fairly recent work, there are already a couple of follow-up works that further weaken the assumptions necessarily for publicly verifiable deletion. Okay, and I will mention uh, a little bit about this uh, on Wednesday also. Okay, um, so for this talk, I want to uh, <clears throat> start by by focusing on actually uh, Alex's uh, candidate scheme from his prior work, and. Here, if you're familiar with dual regev encryption, this will so far look very familiar. In his key gen, he will just sample kind of a, a random wide matrix A and a secret key, which is basically some short or even zero one vector in the kernel of A. Um, and encryption now is gonna be a little bit weird. So to encrypt a bit B, what we're gonna do is, so this row uh, sub sigma function, this is just like a Gaussian uh, function. So basically what we're doing so far is we're setting up a Gaussian weighted superposition over um, uh, strings x in zq to the m. We're kind of evaluating this function into another register a times x. And then we're going to encrypt uh, the bit b by putting it into the phase of this state. So if b is zero, we won't add a phase. If b is one, we're going to add this phase, um, kind of defined by this, this vector here. Um, and then we can just measure the second register to obtain some y. And the final ciphertext, ciphertext state is just a Gaussian weighted superposition over x, such that ax is equal to y uh, with this phase. Okay, And the verification key is y. So the, the reason that this is actually quite similar to dual reg of encryption is because of kind of is, is this fact. Okay, this is this like Gaussian weighted state here is if I apply the Fourier transform uh, over Q to that state, what I'll actually end up with is a state that is exactly just a superposition over dual reg of ciphertext encrypting the bit B. Okay, kind of a superposition over all like uh, random uh, strings S, uh, random error vectors E. Um, and this gives us a dual reg of encryption. So if I, you know, if I basically apply the Fourier transform to my ciphertext and measure it, I'm going to get a dual reg of encryption of B, and then I can use the secret key to decrypt. So that's how decryption works. The interesting thing about this scheme is that, you know, the bit B is actually encrypted in the phase. So there's like a natural deletion procedure that I could hope is secure, which is, what if I just took my ciphertext and instead of applying the Fourier transform, I just measured it in the standard basis, okay? That should erase all of the phase information, and that should thus erase, erase uh, my information about B, right? And to verify that I did this, all I need is this like verification key um, Y, right? And the verification procedure will just like check that my certificate pi is short in some sense, so basically the result of measuring a Gaussian weighted state, and satisfies this equation A times pi is equal to Y. And the point is that this like deletion security property should possibly hold even if even if you know why, okay? Like measuring the state should still um, delete uh, information about B. So let's formalize what we actually want to prove about this scheme. So this is the certified deletion experiment. Um, I'm going to sample this this wide matrix A. I will give my adversary a, an encryption of B um, along with this random Y. Right? And I'll ask the adversary to produce for me a deletion certificate and a leftover state, which I'll call ST. And this experiment will basically abort if the certificate is invalid. Otherwise, it will just output the final state um, of A. And what I want to claim is that the trace distance between the final state of our, of, of our adversary, depending on whether they got an encryption of 0 or an encryption of 1, is negligibly close. This is capturing the fact that if they pass deletion, their leftover state kind of has statistically no more information about the bit B, okay? Um, and so this is kind of the certified deletion experiment that uh, we want to show. Um, what, you know, what Alex actually uh, observed essentially and, and what, we, what we use in this work is that it suffices to prove this experiment, it suffices to uh, reason about a slightly simpler experiment involving the i tie hash function. The i tie hash function, if, is, if you're familiar, is literally just uh, what's going on here, which is like uh, take a, multiply it by a, a short vector uh, to produce the hash output. 
But it suffices to prove this property that we call certified everlasting Gaussian collapsing. Basically, the property is that whether like we can apply a measurement to this state in the standard basis before we give it to the adversary A, and they shouldn't notice that we did that, right? And um, the point is that if we apply this measurement, then we are basically erasing information about B, right? So here is how we formalize this certified everlast everlasting <laughs> Gaussian collapsing game. Now the experiment is a bit simpler. We're still going to sample our wide matrix A. We're going to sample a Gaussian weighted superposition over X such that AX is equal to Y. And then depending on the bit B parameterizing this experiment, we're either going to leave the state alone or we're going to measure it in the standard basis. And then we'll give Y the result of doing that, which is the register X. Uh, along with, with y, okay? And our claim, again, is that the trace distance between this experiment, like whether we measured or didn't, is going to be negligible. So essentially, if the adversary does produce a valid deletion certificate, then even given unbounded time, they shouldn't be able to tell whether we had previously collapsed the state or not. Okay, and this is kind of the first uh, um, contribution of our paper, is, 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 is essentially showing that this is true. I won't go into the, the proof technique here, um, but it builds and kind of extends on uh, techniques from um, an earlier work that I have uh, with Dakshita. And, um, you know, once we observed that, uh, we kind of said, well, why not, why just the ITI hash function? Can we generalize this technique to basically work for any hash function? Okay. So what we define is this notion of target collapsing and certified everlasting target collapsing for any family of hash functions. Let me first just describe this target collapsing experiment, okay? So here I sample a random hash. I, uh, as I describe here, I'm just gonna prepare a random or a uniform superposition over inputs X, evaluate the hash function, measure the output. And so now I have just a superposition over pre-images of Y. And then depending on my bit B, I'll either measure it or not. And I'll give this information to the adversary. And their job is to guess whether I measure it or not. So this is just a, uh, very similar, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with this notion of a collapsing hash function, which is now very ubiquitous in quantum crypto and post-quantum crypto, defined by Unruh a few years ago, this target collapsing experiment is quite similar. It's actually a weakening. In collapsing, we actually assume that the adversary is, is the one that prepares this initial, like, uh, superposition over Xs. In target collapsing, we're saying there, there is a particular state that the challenger is going to prepare and then send that to the adversary. So we're kind of giving the adversary less power. And actually, again, if you're familiar with some of these uh, notions in the classical setting, collision resistance, uh, target collision resistance, um, or like universal one-way hash functions is also a, a related notion. This is kind of a analogous weakening of, of collapsing in the quantum setting. So uh, one thing that we can do is actually, this is still interesting, we can generalize the distribution over X here to any fixed distribution. Uh, we can generalize the measurement of the X register. We don't have to just measure it in the standard basis. We could consider like more coarse grained measurements and still get an interesting notion of target collapsing. Um, but I, what I want to say is that we basically um, take this target collapsing experiment and, and uh, extend it to a, like a certified deletion, certified everlasting type of experiment where we say that um, in the first stage, it's the same experiment, but on the first stage, we ask the adversary to output a pre-image of Y, okay? If they don't do it, then we'll just kind of essentially abort the experiment, output a random bit. But if they do actually do that, then we'll now allow them to be completely unbounded and then guess the bit uh, B prime. And so this is basically capturing, we're, this is trying to capture the fact that if they actually kind of like measure the pre-image and return it to us, then they've kind of erased all information in their state about whether we had previously measured the state or not, right? And kind of the main theorem that we, that we prove in this paper is if H satisfies target collapsing, we also need it to satisfy target collision resistance, uh, which I didn't necessarily define here, but it's a related notion. Then generically, we can show that it automatically satisfies certified everlasting target collapsing, okay? Um, and so this is kind of the main, uh, kind of a generalization of the, the uh, 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 result that I that I started with before. Okay, so for details, I'll uh, ask you to see the paper. Um, essentially, kind of like scoping back out, right? 
we introduce a natural weakening of collapsing that we call target collapsing. Um, uh, we show that you know hash functions with certain like non-everlasting security properties, like target collapsing, automatically give us certified everlasting target collapsing. We use that to prove uh, the security of encryption schemes from prior work, like Fremba's work, HMY as well, or prove that they satisfy publicly verifiable deletion. And we go beyond this to uh, actually design a suite of schemes with publicly verifiable deletion based on these target collapsing hash functions. And a couple future directions, I think these notions of target collapsing and related notions are interesting and deserve more study, like in terms of like the relations uh, between them. Um, and another question, you know, uh, are there other interesting applications of this like weakening of collapsing? Like, are there other things that we can build uh, just from target collapsing and not necessarily uh, require uh, full collapsing? So, uh, thanks for listening again. So, questions for the speaker? So I had a question. Um, so there's been some work on doing certified deletion using classical communication rather than quantum communication. I was wondering if um, you have any thoughts on uh, taking the results you have here into the classical communication domain. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's not uh, it's not really something I've thought about, especially like um, I guess the results that exist about that use like like interaction or like pretty strong assumptions, right? Although I'm not, it's. Uh, yeah, it's unclear to me whether whether this approach will actually um, give you something interesting in just the classical communication setting, but I think it's an interesting thing to, to understand. Yeah. Other questions? So um, when you say public verification, it's with respect to some hash function, right? Like it's, uh, or this is you don't need a hash function because even in the even in the I think Alex's um, Construction like you don't give the a in the clear right the, uh, the um... uh, yes you do so a is just is a is public and also the image y is public right and you need both of those like a is basically the description of the hash function yeah right? so okay so you need that to be public you need the you need the image to be public so do you need um, any like any guarantees on the description of the hash function or uh, like is it like what, what we model in the real world or it can just give it in the clear and still the guarantee holds. Yeah, yeah, you don't need it. Yeah, uh, you don't need any. Um, you don't need to like obfuscate it or anything like that. Yeah, you can just give the description of the hash function as uh, public information. Yeah. yeah, I'm asking this because in the um, in the abstract doubt game, like the certified uh, deletion game, there I didn't see like you gave access to the uh, A as well. Uh, okay. Oh well, good point then. It should have included A. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Other questions? <laughs>